Uh, good evening and welcome back to the Drummond Channel. I had uh, quite a few days off with the long, with the, the long weekend for Thanksgiving. Uh, I don't generally get too excited about the market on Monday following Thanksgiving weekend. And, uh, you know, with today's action was pretty muted and uh, with the anticipation that we're going to see some GDP excitement coming out tomorrow. So Big Brother is going to probably uh, uh, embellish some GDP numbers tomorrow and the market's going to react. So the fun part here this evening is to take a look at the drum and geometry, take a look at the 10-year treasury and the S&P mini and see if we can pick out that hidden market structure that's going to give us an idea where uh, we can see uh, a possible spot for a turnaround or a change in direction or some, some resistance or some support to kick in that's not available to the other traders out there. So let's get started. Okay, let's kick things off with the 10-year treasury. And I want to start over here on the left with the monthly chart and long that's just part of a long downtrend we've seen in in, in the bond market in the 10-year treasury note market so finally got down here into exhaust territory for the monthly chart uh, the farther out support area held nearby support area is holding unless something very drastic happens in the next two days and uh, so we're into probably monthly congestion uh, for the month of December and uh, we're going to see how that plays out on these lower time periods. Now in the middle here on the weekly chart, let me just point out here, you can see the, the PL dot for the monthly, uh, I'm sorry, that's the monthly envelope top and the PL dot, they, they've already started to calculate for, for the month of December. That's, that's why those, those lines look different than what they show here on the monthly and what they show over here on the daily chart. And we can see that the weekly is, is you know, come off the very strong congestion entrance bar, the peel dots were swinging and now they're moving in a nice straight line except for that one little hiccup and pushing up strongly right through what is the quarterly envelope bottom and what's going to be the, you know, the monthly envelope top for next month. So at this point, the higher time period resistance is breaking. Uh, there was, uh, let me get some of this, clean this up for a second. So I've drawn in the weekly five one five two combination and that's not holding as far as as far as we go this week uh, broken right through that so that cluster of resistance which would appear to be formidable has is uh, has not really slowed things down and you can see that move as it was flirting in this area over the last couple of days and then today's move it blew right through there and then it's continued on in the overnight market uh, so we're expecting uh, you know this market that to, to react to the GDP numbers and does it mean that the uh, you know the folks are, are uh, buying the rumor and they're going to sell the news, or is this really a uh, significant move up that's beginning that might be a multi-month rally in a 10-year note? I'm going to move over here to the daily chart, and at this point we're going to we're going to look at this daily. We're going to see that these PL dots that had been traveling sideways in daily congestion have now sorted themselves out, and this is a very strong move coming off of the monthly. PL dot, you've got, uh, again, those resist resistance areas that are broken are now support. So the next stop on the, on the day for tomorrow possibly is this 5-2 coincides with this area up, just up above where is the monthly PL, the monthly envelope top and the quarterly envelope, envelope bottom and also the uh, monthly 5-9. So somewhere around one, uh, let's see, it's uh, one ten sixteen to one ten twenty five, in that range. That's a possible area where this might slow down and, and start to put in uh, a short term top. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Again, watch this on the lower time period. Watch that hourly chart. Look for those hourly bars to start breaking through the peel dot, closing on the underside of the hourly peel dot, and the C waves start to develop on the underside of the. Uh, the, uh, the channel uh, below the envelope bottom. Uh, but right now I'm, I'm anticipating this, this move is probably going to get up here at least and test this and, and as the way it's, it's moved through the way it's moved through this support when you see it on the weekly chart, uh, I'm not anticipating it slowing down a whole lot. Uh, but it, it might be fun to watch and that might be a spot where we might see some uh, counter move action for a short term trade to the downside. 
Okay, now moving on to the E-mini, we have this 5.9 that I've drawn on the monthly chart, 5.9 down. So at the, at the moment, we're flirting with the 5.9 down, we're flirting with the envelope top on the monthly scale and also the quarterly envelope top. And we've broken through there a bit and you can see over here on the weekly chart, this is an incredibly strong move up off that low. This congestion entrance bar and it never even stops. So we're in C wave, C wave, C wave, C wave. But it's showing signs of slowing down because you can see, you can see the PL dot, this PL dot here, the current uh, static PL dot has swung off the main channel line, which again is an early indication that this may be exhausting. So it's exhausting up into an area of multiple time frame resistance. So moving all this stuff over to the daily chart, this is what we're looking at. <coughs> Excuse me, this is what we're looking at for tomorrow. And uh, it's a pretty, pretty good sized area of uh, resistance up above. And these are big moves. Uh, we'll, see, we'll see again how the market on the lower time period reacts up in this area. Uh, if, um, if we do get this spike up in this area, and this resistance, this 5.9 over here on the monthly, you have the, the weekly 1.1 one, one high, and uh, you also had the weekly 5.2, five, 5.1 five, combination just up above. We should start to see that uh, exert itself on the lower time periods if it's going to. And again, same thing as with that note. When you get up into this higher time period resistance area, look for those lower time periods. I like to use a 30 minute and a five minute and a one minute when I'm dealing with the uh, E-mini for the S&P or the NASDAQ and watch those lower time periods to see how it's reacting to this area. Uh, I, I'm not going to try and get and fine tune this right now because again, it's a, it's a huge economic data release tomorrow morning. And the, the closer I try and define this, uh, the more likely I'm going to be way off. So what I want to show you is that we can pick out some areas and this is that hidden market structure that is on our chart for tomorrow before, before they release this economic data. And we can see that and we can start to plan around it. We can anticipate that this area will be strong or it will be weak. And if it's going to be strong, what is the lower time period going to show us? And, and, and that is going to be, again, because it's been moving higher, we're going to see closes down below the PL dot. We're going to see closes in C waves down below the envelope bottom. And that's the early indication that these higher time period resistance areas are holding. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Uh, keep your eye on the ball and uh, we'll see you again next time.